Okay, so welcome. Here we are today, a uh, hot day in July, uh, outside of Austin, Texas at Black Widow MMA. You want to just go ahead and introduce a little bit about the gym, about yourselves, uh, about the kind of classes you do? Cool. Uh, yeah, so we've been here since January of last year. We became a full MMA school, so we offer um, jujitsu, Muay Thai, MMA classes, uh, strength and conditioning. We have yoga, which we'll be bringing back soon, uh, wrestling, things like that. So we definitely have an all-encompassing program that kind of has everything, um, along with youth classes as well. And so we've been here for a while. We've got a really good community feel. And I'm the head striking coach. Jorge is the head jiu-jitsu coach. And we just kind of go back and forth with one another. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I saw a couple of things listed throughout uh, the gym is, um, about some other gyms in here as well as like, you, you moved around recently, right? You were saying you came from a different facility. Yeah. Like, about those changes or affiliations or any of that sort of thing. Yeah, so um, we were at an old location where we were sharing um, a space. So we ran just the Muay Thai program. Okay. And um, when we just, we got a, a big following, a lot of people wanted us to offer more. Um, <laughs> can I go grab my puppy? Let me go grab my Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, we, at the old location, we had, um, we were just doing Muay Thai, um, and at the time, um, I got my brown belt in Jiu-Jitsu, and once, uh, it was interesting because at the time, I was all, I was training for five years consistently, and that's kind of like unheard of in the community. People were like, there was, black belt, I got their black belt in like 10 years, and they're like, well, you know, we want to train more Jiu-Jitsu in a year. We're like, well, we're just doing Muay Thai, and so we got more of a demand for it. And the small space that we were at, it started getting uh, where it's a little crowded. So we're around December, two years ago. Yeah. We had a kind of fallen, like, look for another space that was bigger, you know, for just like, well, you know, we, we need to offer more. We need to give the people what they want, I guess, you know. And so we found this place, started offering uh, jiu-jitsu, no gi, gi, wrestling, uh, MMA, along with the Muay Thai, you know. Mm -hmm. So everything started encompassing itself where we're just a full-on MMA school, you know. Right on. So, uh, so building off of that, you're talking about giving people like more of what they need and what they want. And obviously, we've just had a situation with the lockdown and all that. And you know, we were talking about uh, Zoom classes. So, you know, run us through a little bit of uh, kind of how it how it worked here, what happened, and how you reacted to that situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was tough when we first heard that gyms had to close down. You know, we got a little nervous because we're like, man, we had just we had just hit the one year. Um, and everything was going great, program was building up, we've had a lot of guys go in and fight and, you know, compete in tournaments and everything was, was picking up and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you gotta shut down completely. So that was a little bit overwhelming, but we adjusted immediately. I had a, a friend reach out to me and she's like, have you heard of Zoom? Um, she's like, you know, I've used that to teach kids karate in Mexico. So she moved here to Austin and uh, she trains with us and she's like, you know, I teach kids that way, so it's a good platform. So I was like, well, let's give it a try. So we definitely had, um, just yeah. moving anyways. Um, so yeah, we definitely uh, took off pretty quick with that. I think we were only off a couple of days before we started the Zoom classes, and we offered that daily to um, adults and to kids. So we would offer um, a kids class, and we got great participation in that, the adult class. And you know, a lot of the people that did it was, said it was really fulfilling to be able to work on all the small details, um, footwork, things like that, and learn how to work on their own. Because everybody thinks with jujitsu and Muay Thai, you have to have that, um, you know, you have to have a partner or a class setting. But we were definitely able to teach them a lot um, through Zoom. And so we had classes, I think it was Monday through Friday, right? Um, every day. And like Jorge was saying, you know, when we were, whenever we had any time off, we'd come in here to try to improve the, the building. So he painted this mural, yeah, that yeah. one over well, there. Yeah, these because it's beautiful. And yeah. And just chat about you know, Thank stuff. You. Like, this, this is one of my favorites, of course, but all <laughs> yeah. around this artwork. Yeah, so that, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was, we just were the types that we can't sit still, you know? So, and uh, Jorge, prior to, like he said, he got his brown belt in five years. Um, that was because he was training each and every day. I think you said you've only taken two days off in your entire martial arts career, like maybe three. Um, so to take off during quarantine by force was definitely something that was a little difficult for us. So we would train together. Um, we would, you know, do the classes and everything. We could kind, of, kind of adjust, and we were always available to everybody. Um, we have a class every Friday called Boxing and Brews. So what we used to do is we would uh, train here, and then we take a jog to one of the breweries close by. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and actually, we ended up getting a sponsorship that way because we would oh, wow. go to Oscar Blues every week. And so they offered to do something uh, with them. And so we started Beer Jitsu, which we clear out the entire front half of the brewery and put mats 
hats down, and then we oh, rode for like two hours. Oh, so that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lot of fun, so we did that every month. Um, so, and the different proceeds would go to, to charities or to local athletes that needed help, which is a lot of, um, it was a lot of fun to be able to do that. So, since we couldn't do it, we started hosting a virtual happy hour um, every Friday after our boxing class, which was a great way to kind of stay in touch with everyone, because through all of this, we all kind of felt like, oh man, you know, we don't have contact with one another, we're having to stay home. We lost the social aspect of the gym, right, so right, right. that was a good way to kind of keep that, and uh, we still do it now that we came back to the gym, but since Oscar Blues is still closed, we just bring their beer here and just... We have a beer after training, so still fine. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's a nice way to keep it going. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we just did a great uh, session. We did a Muay Thai. We did some pad work. It was great. Um, and obviously things are just you know, a little bit different. So we started right, come in, uh, do a temperature gun, do uh, the masks on during during training. That's that's pretty interesting. And obviously things are changing, right? So Texas just had an announcement, right, about mm -hmm. the, the masks in general. Um, anything, anything that you want to talk about coming, like what's coming up in the next couple weeks and how you're looking to, to get things going again? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep the masks going. Uh, we actually just ordered, Jorge designs all of our gear here, so he awesome. had some uh, designs specifically for the gym. Um, so we've got those coming in. They'll be a little bit more um, adjusted to, to what we do, so all the members will have that available to them. And, you know, some gyms, that we've seen a lot of people just kind of cite different things as to why the mask isn't important, but, mm -hmm. you know, with how quick it can spread and how close we have to be. It's a small sacrifice we're all willing to make. Again, I just pulled it down, but we're six feet apart almost, right? And <laughs> but for class, we definitely keep it on. If ever I have to explain, I stand in a corner, bring this down, or it is the same, keeps his on. Um, so we'll keep the mask going. We're going to keep the temperature checks. Uh, we're, what our team always says, we're one of the cleanest gyms I've ever been to. We clean every day in between classes. Um, we definitely make sure that we keep everything up to date. But whatever, you know, Texas asks for, we're going to keep having to do right, because right. we want to just keep training and keep the gym open. Right. So that's definitely yeah. our goal. No, so. Definitely a great policy. Um, I mean, as far as, like, me coming in and having to work, this is the first one where I've had to do mass and things can change as we go. But, like, wasn't as bad as I expected. Like, I, was <laughs> like, I was like, okay, little, like, enhanced cardio workout. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a little strange when you're, like, sucking air. <laughs> 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 other than that, yeah, it wasn't so bad. Um, Anyway, uh, appreciate the time so much. If you want to just throw up uh, your, your links for socials, for how people can reach out and, and get more info and things about you guys. Yeah, well, we're all on all online social media. It's like uh, Facebook, Instagram, Blackwood MMA, TX. Um, we always give shout-outs to our sponsors, like Oscar Blues, uh, uh, Cryo Body Works. That's another one. Um, what else do we have? Meal Pros. Meal Pros is another and one. a couple of others. So all of our athletes. Everybody that's a member is actually a sponsored athlete, which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah, we always try to make it to where it's like, I, we've been to gyms where they solely focus on the fighters, mm -hmm. and it makes some of the hobbyists or recreationalists kind of feel like, well, I guess I have to be a fighter to get some attention, and we're the opposite. Everybody gets the same amount of attention. Whether you're a fighter, you come in once a month, once a year, we get some people that travel from out of the state to come see us, and they still get the same kind of uh, vibe, you know? We want to make sure everybody feels like a sponsor athlete. That's why I feel every time we get these sponsorships, it's not just us. It's like, oh... Hey, I also have uh, this sponsorship here, this sponsorship here, you know, so I want to make sure that uh, when we people train as hard, they recover as well as, you know, and also have that little social media part, you know, because Oscar yeah. Blues offers that yeah. little. <laughs> yeah, definitely on uh, Instagram, we're very active on that because okay, it's the cool. easiest way to connect. So yeah, Blackwood MMA TX for our All right, well, we'll link you up. Thank you so much for having See me here tonight. I'm going to shake some hands, get some hand sanitizer. I know, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.